There is so much unnecessary filler flooding the eShop these days, especially simulators. This month alone, we have a new fish market simulator, a drone simulator, and a storage unit flipping simulator. Are people actually playing these? Like, just, just go outside and, and live. Oh, no, I can't, I can't. But today, we're not gonna be talking about those anymore. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and with the help of my colleagues, we churned through all of the games that are coming to the Nintendo Switch in the month of August, and we found 16 titles that we can't wait to talk about. There's some really exciting stuff here. So strap in and let's see what the month of August has in store for the Switch. It's never good to show up late to something, but arriving early can either be a real gift and a curse in itself. And that's exactly what happens in Thank Goodness You're Here. You're just a little man who's traveling to a new city for a job and arrived far too early. And coincidentally, everyone in the town could use your help. I demoed this game at the Day of the Devs last winter, and it immediately had me hooked with its cartoonish, hand-drawn art style, the witty British voice acting, and the genuine absurdity of the tasks at hand. Much like Untitled Goose Game, there's a large world to explore, but instead you get to be the good boy who helps out everybody instead of the bad goose. If you're curious to learn more, our old chap Alex has gone and done the full review for Thank Goodness You're Here, and it's up on our channel. He honestly loved it, but go give it a look if you need more convincing. Oh, and by the way, the game's out now, so go play it. A game like Operation Tango just wouldn't have worked back in the day when split-screen gaming was kind of the most convenient way to play games with friends. But now that we can tether our consoles together thanks to the internet, magical multi-screen gaming ideas like this can truly blossom. Launching on August 1st, Operation Tango puts you and a friend in the shoes of spies and hackers. You have to work together to survive and take down a mega corporation. Silence isn't an option either, as you have to talk with your teammate, as you'll both be doing completely different tasks in different environments and part of the map. You'll be working independently but together, much like a spy or a heist movie. Operation Tango has been available on other consoles for a few years now, but having this on Switch is a huge win, complete with cross-play for other platforms, and a friend pass will be available sometime down the road, so only one of you will need to buy the game. I'm personally really excited to give this a go, as it looks like it'll scratch that cooperative Left 4 Dead or Payday itch that I've been missing for years. But with only two players, I think it'll hit on a more personal level. For the PlayStation kids out there, Tomba likely holds a special place in their heart. Like me, there's a good chunk of other people out there though who only played this game thanks to one of the many demo discs it was offered on. But now that changes as Limited Run Games is bringing Tomba back to the masses and August 1st marks the return and Nintendo isn't missing out this time. Tomba is a 2.5D action platformer built with all the power the original PlayStation could offer. You play as the pink-haired boy Tomba, who's on a mission to get back their golden bracelet from an army of evil pigs. It's pretty simple in the gameplay department with lots of platforming and pig thrashing combat, but it's the kind of game that'll make you feel all cozy inside, especially if you have a fondness for this era of sprite-based 3D games. This new remastered version of the game includes a brand new soundtrack, but still offers you the choice to listen to the original if you want. And it has a museum full of concept art and other fun things for longtime fans to sink their teeth into. And it's out now too. The original World of Goo took the world by storm when it launched on PC and Wii back in 2008. And while the developers have worked on plenty of other wacky games since then, we're thrilled to see them playing with Putty again as World of Goo 2 slops its way on a Nintendo Switch on August 2nd. Your gooey player character and their movements remind me a lot of the Venom symbiote. So you'll kind of flop around, connecting more goo, building bridges, structures, and doing everything you can to get as much goo sucked up at the end of the level. The first game played phenomenally well with pointer controls on Wii, and it has us hoping that this sequel will, will do its best to nail down motion controls and maybe even touch controls for handheld play. More World of Goo is never a bad thing, and we can't really see how they can mess this one up. From the makers of the recent Shin-Chan game on Switch comes Natsuman 20th Century Summer Kid on the 6th of August. 
This is the first official game in the Boku no Natsu Yasumi series to come west. Sure, we did get Shin-chan and Attack of the Friday Monsters on the 3DS, but they were both spin-offs of the main My Summer Vacation series. This is the real deal. If you try out the demo that's available on the eShop, you'll see that you just get to live life as a kid, exploring the countryside of Japan, making friends, fishing, finding bugs, joining festivals, and playing games. Live life without worry and just have fun with whatever happens. The series has been going strong in Japan for decades now, but a big focus with this new entry is the fact that a touring circus is coming to town, and you'll be tasked with helping them run their show. It all sounds a little strange, but we bet it'll all make sense in the end once we actually get to play the full game. We're so lucky to have this, and I can't wait to fully immerse myself in the sounds of cicadas, trains, and fireworks. It should go without saying, too, that Felix is so Oh, please, this one is coming to the West. So let's hope that it lives up to his expectations. If you're a fan of classics like Rastan and Ghosts and Goblins, then keep your eyes on Volgar the Viking 2, which hacks its way into Switch on August 6th. This is a brutal arcade platformer. Death is always one swipe away. The original game was punishing, and it sounds like this sequel will be just as hard. But if your reflexes aren't as quick as they once were, this sequel actually does add some optional features like save states and checkpoints. It's worth noting though that all those extra features are optional, and I'm thinking that most people that would be interested in this sort of game anyways might not want to use them. But having those options is a great thing. Prepare to be whiskered away on the 8th of August because Cat Quest 3 is preparing to claw away all your free time. While traditionally set in a more medieval sort of fantasy world, this third entry in the series is a swashbuckling adventure, letting you sail the seas with a pal in search of quests, treasure, and the nasty Pie Rat King. What a silly name. We quite liked the first two Cat Quest games, so consider our curiosity peaked. Plus, our pal John Cartwright does some voice work in this game too. That'll have no effect on our review score, of course, but we're excited to see where he pops up. Have you played any of these games yourself? They seem to have quite the following, and honestly, when you have cats as main characters, we can understand why. The pirate life doesn't stop there though, as coincidentally, SteamWorld Heist 2 also launches on the 8th of August and is fully embracing life at sea. We had the chance to go hands-on with this at Summer Game Fest and found the turn-based treasure hunt and combat really engaging. The world is full of so much life and color, especially in comparison to the dark and rusty first outing from 2015. We had a ton of fun with this, cruising around the ocean in our ship, battling enemies, and docking on land to take on Quest. Combat reminds us a lot of what games like Worms and Gunbound did back in the day, taking turns and time to line up your shots to take down as many enemies as you can. Just make sure you have enough ammo and health at the end to make sure at least one person can escape with the treasure. Another one for the 8th of August is Vivid Lope, a game that looks a lot like a long lost Dreamcast gem. Gameplay reminds me a bit of Qbert in the sense that you're asked to roam around each stage, stepping on as many different blocks as you can in order to turn them into your color. So think Splatoon in a sense, but this is all a single player game. For 10 bucks, you're getting one heck of a project here, with a full story mode featuring cutscenes, a smashing soundtrack, and tons of charm with its characters. This right here is another perfect example of why I love researching games every month like this, and if early Steam reviews can be trusted, this seems like a fun one to get stuck into. A definite highlight for me this month. Then hopping all the way to the 15th of August comes Arco, a beautiful pixel art adventure through a mysteriously wild west world. Combat uses a mix of real-time action and turn-based decision making. It reminds me a lot of Transistor in that sense, the way that you get to stop time, plan out a ton of actions, and then essentially press play and watch bullets fly and enemies fall. What intrigues me more though is the world design and the direction of the story. You'll play as four different characters and will seemingly find tons of varying locations to explore. It looks like a vast world and I just want to jump in. Just please someone give me a weapon first. A game called Squiggle Drop launches on the Switch on the 15th and it reminds me a bit of Scribble Knots in the sense that you need to use your imagination to solve whatever task is at hand. But instead of writing words, you'll be able to draw different objects. One level may ask you to save a cake from a rainstorm, but it's completely up to you to figure out how to do it. Maybe you can make a shelter or an umbrella to save the cake or draw someone to eat the cake. 
I don't know how wild the possibilities are, but it seems like each level will have different ways to complete them. The game released on Apple Arcade last year, but for only $5 on Switch, I feel like I'm going to put a lot of time into this one if I get the chance. It looks a bit simpler than something like Baba is You, but I want a creative brain teaser where I don't have to work so hard. The Game Boy titles are amongst some of my favorites in the Zelda series, and I'm happy to admit that part of this is probably due to nostalgia, and Castaway is doing a great job of leaning into those memories, and it launches on Switch on August 16th. The graphics, combat, and even the movement look identical to those original games, in a good way. The interesting twist with this game though is that the story mode seems to be brief. The real meat of the game will be in the survivor mode, which sounds a lot like a roguelite in the sense that you'll be able to take on this tower of levels over and over again. This is another one that I had no idea existed until doing this research, so I can't wait to play this one. Then, if we fly onward to the 21st, we'll be able to play the Kiki's Delivery Service-inspired Mika and the Witch's Mountain. You'll take on missions for the townsfolk of the island, delivering packages all over, and can explore the island to your heart's content. I do worry a bit that the gameplay could get a little repetitive over time, but as long as things don't overstay their welcome and the gameplay can diversify itself, this could be a really nice flight. From the trailer we've gotten to see as well, it appears like there will be some kind of dungeons or secrets to find within the island too, so I'm definitely keen to keep tabs on this one. The day after, on the 22nd, we'll be packing up and spending the rest of the summer on another remote island with our grandpa in Tales of Tokyo Toki Arrival of the Witch. This is a visual novel adventure game with stunning art direction and the promise of a heartfelt story. It's been available on Steam for a few years now, but only in Japanese, so I'm thankful that this one will get the chance to spread its wings in the West. We don't know much about it at the moment, but being set at only $30 makes it a bit more enticing. I'm a sucker for a good adventure game, and this month looks like there's a lot of those to play. Dashing and slashing onto Switch on the 29th is Shadow of the Ninja Reborn, a remake of a cult classic NES game. While the art and sound have gotten a drastic facelift, this co-op beat-em-up boasts tons of new weapons to take down your foes with, too. This remake looks stunning, and it makes me feel like I'm looking at a long-forgotten 2000s-era arcade game that was left behind because it used pixel art and not 3D graphics. But no, this is being built from the ground up in the modern era, and frankly, we don't deserve it. I get goosebumps at the thought of playing this with a late-night pizza and a few soda pops with a pal. So now I've just gotta make that happen. When Nintendo first teased Emio, the Smiling Man, we were really convinced this had to be some new franchise for Nintendo. As beyond Fatal Frame and Eternal Darkness, it didn't make sense for this really to be anything else, right? But then someone by the name The Royal Trash left a comment on our video discussing the topic, and while they doubted the chances, they guessed that this could be a new game in the Famicom Detective Club series. And they were right. Putting a grisly end to our list on August 29th is Emio the Smiling Man Famicom Detective Club. We're not sure honestly how many of you have played these games as they first came to the West in 2021 and only as digital titles. And while those games were remakes of Japan exclusive Famicom games, Emio is a brand new game in the series and is being produced by the creator of the Metroid series, Yoshio Sakamoto. I played through one of the Famicom Detective Club remakes, and I really liked it. Those first few games had their fair share of scary moments, but Nintendo seems to be ratcheting up the horror this time, maybe in hopes that more people will be interested in it, as the first few remakes were rated T for Teen, and this one has an M for Mature rating. You'll be hunting down a serial killer who goes by the name The Smiling Man, and it actually stars the same detective agency that the original games had, so anyone who played those games will feel right at home with this team. I know a lot of people were disappointed to see that this is just another Famicom Detective Club game, but those people just don't understand how important it is to have this series get new life. If you're into stuff like Phoenix Wright, or maybe have never even played a game like this before, I urge you to give this a shot. Obviously, we've not played MEO yet, so we can't give you a review or preview of it, but if it's anything like those first two games, it's going to be a great time. And there you have it! That went by a lot quicker than I was expecting. 16 upcoming Nintendo Switch games. There were more that we would have loved to put on this list as well, but 
for time's sake, we just we can't talk about everything. So let us know in the comments down below if you learned about something new today that you're looking forward to putting on your wish list or buying it day one. Or let us know if you think there's something that we missed out on that we should have put on this list. We read the comments and so do a lot of other people. So go ahead and drop your thoughts down below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, then why don't you prepare that subscribe button for school? Because before you know it, school is going to be back in session. It's, it's that season already. I hate it. What happened to the summer? Thank you all so much for watching. Really, these videos are a blast to make. I always feel like I learned so much and I end up adding tons of games to my own personal Nintendo Switch wish list, which is very big. Even though I have tons of games, it's still fun to put games on the list. So thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for letting us make these videos for you. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you all next time. Oh.